This is one of those midweek put together ones because to be honest guys, I have had three weeks of manic work. There has been no chance of doing anything except nose to the grindstone, just the way it is. But some of you like to watch stuff other than fishing. So for those of you who are just fishing nuts, this is not a fishing film, it's just a filler I put up because I have to occasionally go across and help my son Mike who recently purchased a nice piece of woodland in Hampshire. We've got Ryan over there. I was filming with Mike and I had some footage here. I thought a lot of those shots haven't been used. People might be interested in seeing what was going on. So we had to get Ryan the tree surgeon in because although this huge tree had fallen over with its massive root ball there, uh, we didn't want to waste it. It's been over for years. We wanted to get him to try and saw it up and not just into sections, but into nice big planks and square 4x4 four four stakes that we could use to build stuff with. Well, these bluebells just go straight through that sawdust, no problem. Yeah, yeah, they're so hardy. Where we go with yeah, this? Yeah, I was going to say, where are we going? Should we just go down there? Yeah, yeah, probably. That's just a spare, These isn't it? These weigh a ton, don't they? Yeah, I remember that. First one's worst. <clears throat> Well you can see the first cut there is lovely and flat because Ryan used that ladder initially to give him the actual flat slope to make that very first cut on the top sort of curved area and that gives him a nice flat spot which he can then rest on and cut. The tree root itself as you can see is enormous and actually burst apart when Ryan cut uh, a lot of the other tree apart, the sort of top end if you like. Now what he's got to do, having cut the first flat, flat section, is to try and, and jack it over using this special jack um, to rotate it 90 degrees because he now wants to make another flat cut across the top. The reason being there's a split vertically where it's obviously burst when it fell over on the tree and he won't get the same amount of uh, cuts on it unless he rotates it on this special jack. Basically all it is is a two pin system and you lift the log up, the one pin engages um, and then the other ratchet mechanism brings the second pin up to engage in the series of holes and then just allows it to progress up the, up the rail. Then he's got to chock it underneath to stop it rolling back in case it skids off the jack. Now this piece of tree is about, I think it's nine feet long, might be a touch more. So that is probably well over two tonnes there of weight. And you definitely don't need that rolling back, skidding off onto your feet or onto your body because you're not, even with three of us there, you're not rolling it off um, to get the guy out underneath. Now you can see how the jack's rotating. At least two tonnes, maybe three tonnes of tree there. Might even be more than that. I haven't got balance with me to weigh it. And now he's got it going over. As you can see, the square side is now rotated 90 degrees but he's now got to go round the other side he chocks it all the time to stop it moving but he doesn't want it rolling completely over so we've got to try and get it pushed over and then when it's sort of almost 90 degrees go round and he's got to quickly chock it he then refits that ladder system that he's got there to give him his flat surface obviously he can't run the chainsaw along the top because it would be guesswork this way by doing this sort of Heath Robinson way of screwing through this ladder. The ladder gives him a, a flat plate, if you like, to slide that chainsaw over. There's the unit he uses, a very, very long piece of a blade on that chainsaw. And it's quite hard work, actually, because he's, he's got to cut those 
pieces off. There you go. There's the second half come off. So now he's got 90 degrees. He can make squares out of that if he wants. But we also wanted to get him to cut a nice neat cylinder, a nice flat piece off using the normal chainsaw for a project we had in mind. That's how we deal with that bit, isn't it? Perfect, yeah. Look at the pattern on it. <laughs> Having cut off the section to about nine feet, he then resets the uh, chainsaw unit and he can take off more lengths. So we've now got to get Ryan in all his climbing kit and he's going to go up and put this disc at the top. There it is all, all tied up. He's got loads and loads of straps and he's going to climb up there with just nothing more safety conscious than Ryan and he's using special straps and tree climbing boots to get all the way up what we call a monolith on a previous episode of the totally awesome outdoors or TA outdoors. He had actually cut this to a monolith. Now you can see he's dragging up this, uh, pretty heavy actually, um, we're going to call it a nesting, a raptor nesting platform that we're going to try and put on the top of this monolith tree. Rather than saw the whole tree we thought it would be a good idea to actually use it. It was uh, topped off uh, up there as you can see um, and then just get an idea of that height, how far he is up there please. Yeah, that looks good.
Happy with that where it is? We then uh, filled up his bag, his tote bag there, uh, with as many branches as we could get in there. And while Ryan's up there, he could make the start of a nest. You know, it just might attract something like red kites, buzzards, who knows, owls. I have no idea. But we thought it would be a, a good idea to try and do this. Look at the height he's climbed up to. Pretty scary. So all set. He's down. He's got it all up there. So that's our, well, that is a long way up, I have to say. That is our TA Outdoors bird nesting station for red kites, for owls, for anything, hopefully a buzzard. Well, thanks for watching that one. I know it's not a fishing one, but I thought a lot of you guys out there might be interested and may never have seen one of those milling chainsaws used before. And Ryan, of course, does know his stuff. We've now got some great big pieces we can make some luxurious furniture out of. Anything really. The world is your oyster once you've got it all milled down. And listen, it saves wasting all that beautiful wood rather than just it letting it lie on the ground and rot. We're going to make use of it. Stay tuned on TA Fishing and TA Outdoors, especially TA Outdoors, and learn what, what, well, what we're going to be doing with it. It's not really a secret. Some things are going to be big, some things are going to be small. Make sure you don't miss an episode.